Chapter 2 Gifts of Healing Plus by F. F. Bosworth For more than 30 years during great evangelistic campaigns, I have overworked, praying for the sick and afflicted. During 14 years of this time, we conducted the National Radio Revival, during which time we received about a quarter of a million letters, most of them containing prayer requests from sick and suffering people who could not have recovered without the direct action of the Holy Spirit in response to the prayer of faith. We have received multiple thousands of unsolicited testimonies from those who have been miraculously healed of every bodily affliction I know anything about including leprosy. To God be all the glory, because these results are impossible to anyone but Him. As a result of these miracles, many thousands have been joyfully converted, whom we would have missed had we not preached the healing part of the gospel once a week in all our evangelistic campaigns. Because this healing ministry has required labor beyond human strength, we have prayed, oh so earnestly, for God to raise up more laborers to help in this so greatly neglected phase of the ministry. And during the past few years, I have often wept for joy over God's recent gift to the church of our beloved brother, William Branham, with his marvelous gift of healing. This is a case of God doing exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Ephesians 3 verse 20 for I have never seen or read anything to equal the healing ministry of William Branham. An Angel Appears On May 7, 1946, an angel who had spoken to Brother Branham in audible voice at intervals from his childhood down to the present time finally appeared to him, and among other things told him that Christ's coming was near at hand. And the heavenly messenger said, I am sent from the presence of Almighty God to tell you that God has sent you to take a gift of healing to the peoples of the world. On page 1291 of the Schofield Bible, Dr. C. I. Schofield, D.D., in his footnote on angels, says, Though angels are spirits, Psalms 104 verse 4, Hebrews 1 verse 14, power is given them to become visible in the semblance of human form. Genesis 19 verse 1, and many other scriptures in both the Old and New Testaments. In Exodus 23 verse 20, God said to Moses, Behold, I send an angel before thee, to keep thee in the way, and to bring thee into the place I have prepared. And in Genesis 24 verse 40, we read, The Lord will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way. This is exactly what God has done for Brother Branham. He does not begin to pray for the healing of the afflicted in body in the healing line each night until God anoints him for the operation of the gift and until he is conscious of the presence of the angel with him on the platform. Without this consciousness, he seems to be perfectly helpless. Two Signs Given Now notice that God not only sent an angel to be with Moses, he also gave him two perfect miracles as signs and proofs to the people that God had appeared to him and commissioned him under divine guidance to be their deliverer. Exodus 4 verse 1 to 31 The first sign was that of Moses' rod becoming a serpent. And the second sign was that of putting his hand in his bosom and having it become as leprous as snow, etc. God said to Moses, it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Exodus 4 verse 8 In the last three verses of this chapter, we read that when these two signs were repeated in the sight of the people, the people believed, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Just so, in addition to sending an angel to be with and to prosper Brother Branham, he has also given him two perfectly miraculous signs which have served to raise the faith of thousands of the humanly incurable to the level where the gift of healing operates. Supernatural Diagnosis The first sign. When the angel appeared to Brother Branham, he told him how he would be able to detect and diagnose all diseases and afflictions, that when the gift was operating, 
By taking the right hand of the patient, he would feel various physical vibrations or pulsations, which would indicate to him the various diseases from which each patient was suffering. Germ diseases, which indicate the presence and working of an oppressing, Acts 10 verse 38, spirit of affliction can be distinctly felt. When the afflicting spirit comes into contact with the gift, it sets up such a physical commotion that it becomes visible on Brother Branham's hand and so real that it will stop his wristwatch instantly. This feels to Brother Branham like taking hold of a live wire with too much electric current in it. When the oppressing spirit is cast out in Jesus' name, you can see Brother Branham's red and swollen hand return to its normal condition. If the affliction is not a germ disease, then God always reveals the affliction to Brother Branham by the spirit. This first sign usually raises the faith of the individual to the healing level, but if not, the second sign does. A seer. The second sign. The angel told him that the anointing would cause him to see and enable him to tell the sufferers many of the events of their lives from their childhood down to the present time. He even tells some of their thoughts while they are coming to the platform or before they came to the meeting. I heard him say recently to a mother bringing her little girl, Lady, your child was born deaf and dumb, and as soon as you discovered she could not hear, you took her to the doctor. And then Brother Branham told the mother exactly what the doctor said. The mother said, That is exactly right. The great audience hears all this over the public address system. Brother Branham actually sees it enacted. And pushing the microphone away so the audience won't hear it, he tells the patient any unconfessed and unforsaken sins in their lives which must be given up before the gift will operate for their deliverance. As soon as such persons acknowledge and promise to forsake the sin or sins thus revealed, their healing often comes in a moment before Brother Branham has time to pray. These statements by the angel are verified in the Branham meetings nightly before the eyes of thousands. Thus, the great audiences witness nightly over and over again three distinct types of miracles. The first two do not heal the sufferers, but only serve as signs to raise the faith of the afflicted to the level where the gift of healing operates for their deliverance. Of course, these two miraculous signs are possible only while the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon Brother Branham for this purpose. More than gifts of healing. No doubt a few Christians here and there, during the church age, and some at the present time, have been endowed with the gift of healing, which is listed among the nine spiritual gifts in the twelfth chapter of 1 Corinthians, each of which is defined as the manifestation of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 to 11. There should be laymen in every church thus endowed. But Brother Branham is a channel for more than the mere gift of healing. He is also a seer as were the Old Testament prophets. He sees events before they take place. I asked him, What do you mean? How do you see them? He replied, Just as I see you, only that I know it is a vision. Just as clearly as one sees material things around them, Brother Branham, while in prayer during the day, sees in vision some of the principal miracles before they take place. He sees some carried in on ambulance carts, or sitting in wheelchairs, and can describe how they look and how they are dressed, etc. While being shown these miracles in advance, he usually becomes, for the time, unconscious of things going on around him. Not once during the more than six years since receiving the gift have these revelations failed to produce perfect miracles exactly as he had already seen them in visions. At these times he can say with absolute certainty, Thus saith the Lord, and he is never wrong. He told me that he simply acts out what he has already seen himself doing in the vision. The success of this phase of his ministry is exactly 100%. Looking at the unseen When the gift is operating, Brother Branham is the most sensitive person to the presence and working of the Holy Spirit and to spiritual realities of any person I have ever known. Under the anointing which operates his spiritual gifts, and when he is conscious of the angel's presence, he seems to break through the veil of the flesh into the world of spirit, and seems to be struck through and through with a sense of the unseen. 
Paul wrote, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Paul's words here indicate that we are now living in two worlds at the same time, the world of sense and the world of spirit. The world of spirit surrounds, enspheres, and interpenetrates the world of sense. Both worlds occupy the same space at the same time. The material realities which we see with our natural eyes exist in the midst of the far better realities which are unseen by the optic nerve. The scriptures teach us that the superior eternal realities encompass us now. What sights might every one of us see at every moment of our existence, at every turn of our path, had we anointed eyes with which to see them? The seen exists in the midst of the unseen, the temporal in the midst of the eternal. Paul says, He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. While filled with the Holy Spirit, our spirit and God's spirit are blended into one in the same way that the ocean and the bay are one because the ocean flows into the bay. Then it is that the glorious spiritual realities gain the ascendancy and become the most dominant. We see truth and spiritual realities through God's eyes. At such times, future events seem to be present like a preview of a coming motion picture attraction. Jesus said that, The Spirit will show you things to come. Miracles seen in advance During a Fort Wayne meeting, a lady came into the healing line carrying a child which was born with a club foot, which with its leg was in a plaster cast. The moment Brother Branham saw them, without stopping to pray for the child's healing, he said to the lady, Oh, yes, will you do what I tell you to do? The lady answered, I will. Then he said to her, Go home and get that cast off, and when you come back tomorrow night, bring the child, and she will have a perfect foot. The microphone carried these words to all in the great audience. It took them more than an hour that night to get the cast off. When the lady brought the child the next night, the child had a perfect foot and was wearing a new pair of little white shoes and was walking. The doctor x-rayed the foot and found it perfect. I asked Brother Branham the next day why he passed the lady and the child through the healing line without praying for the healing of the child. He answered, It wasn't necessary, for in a vision in the afternoon I saw the child healed. It would make this article too long if I should relate many other cases much more wonderful in detail than this case. This phase of his ministry alone would furnish matter for a book. In the fifth chapter of St. John, Jesus says, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. What did Jesus mean? Of course, Jesus was a seer as were the Old Testament prophets. He saw his miracles before they happened. He saw the man which had an infirmity thirty-eight years, who could not get into the pool when the angel went down and troubled the water. Jesus came to him and said to him, Take up thy bed and walk. Jesus saw Lazarus raised from the dead before he performed the miracle. He said to Nathanael, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. John 1 verse 48 He saw where the ass colt was tied without being there. He said to two of his disciples, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him. Mark 14, verse 12 to 16. And the indwelling Christ is now perpetuating his works through human instrumentality, according to his promise for this age. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Because I go to the Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 14, verse 12 and 13.